It's been nine months since the M4 Mac Mini has come out, and I have to say, even here in late 2025, I am still impressed with this machine. But as a filmmaker, I have started to hit some limits with this machine that I didn't quite expect. So let's talk about what's great, what's not, and is the M4 Mac Mini still worth it here in 2025? Right now I've been using the Mac in this configuration with this cool little 80s retro style hub that has a screen built in. It's giving me some extra functionality. It's a cool little device. I did a review on it. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Why is there so much buzz around these machines? They've been around for a few years now, and that's the thing. The Apple Silicon versions of the M4 Mac Mini, the M4 MacBook Air, even the M1 Mac Mini MacBook Air, they are the start of us being able to consider the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air be pro-level machines. Prior to 2020, we wouldn't really consider using a Mac Mini or a MacBook Air for any kind of video editing. They were really just productivity machines. And then when Apple Silicon came out, all of a sudden, I could edit video on a Mac Mini, a MacBook Air. I could use DaVinci and have some sacrifices, but actually use it. That's why the M4 Mac Mini and the M4 MacBook Air, quite frankly, are huge deals because of how much you could do on them in 2025 compared to what we used to be able to do on them. They can now be professional machines for 90 to 95% of users out there. So that being said, the M4 Mac Mini has been my main desktop computer here at home for over the past nine months. It's so compact, it takes up less space than when I use my M3 Pro MacBook Pro on my desk. Even when I add this cool little retro 80s design with the screen on top, this cool little device has really taken me down from using three screens all the time to two, and this little screen on top being the third screen. Mainly because of RAM, I noticed using three screens with the M4 Mac Mini since it is the base model version, I was starting to hit up against a wall with RAM, where when I went down to having two normal size displays, that really wasn't as much of an issue anymore, especially if I was just running a few tabs in DaVinci Resolve. But the M4 Mac Mini, it's small, it's silent, and it's really fast, especially for the money. It handles my everyday productivity, editing YouTube videos, podcasts, and even some client work, depending on what cameras I'm using for that job. 90 to 95% of users in general out there will find that the base model M4 Mac Mini can handle everything they need plus more. Students, creatives, indie filmmakers who are, again, using cameras that are shooting the right codecs that will work with the M4 Mac Mini that you don't have to make sacrifices for. All of these use cases, the M4 Mac Mini is fantastic. It's even a little bit better of a value than the M4 MacBook Air. It is quite simply the best value Mac computer at $599 and it's been going on sale a lot over the past year. I mean, even Micro Center right now, if you go into the store, you can pick one up for $450. But now here's where I've had the M4 Mac Mini start to struggle. I'm starting to use my RED Komodo a lot more now. I'm actually even using it right now as my studio camera, and the RED Komodo forces you to shoot in 6K RAW in order to use the entire sensor, which is what I want. In all cameras, I want to be able to use the entire sensor. So filming in 6K RAW, I've started to hit up a wall on the M4 Mac Mini because once you put multiple pieces of footage clips in your timeline, and then you do something as simple as color grade, it's no longer smooth playback. Now there are sacrifices you can make and there are changes you can make to your timeline in order to do this, but the short of it is, everything will take longer on the M4 Mac Mini. Longer isn't necessarily always worse, but when I'm doing client work on the 6K Red Komodo, time is money. So a great example is if I'm budgeting $500 to edit a client job, and on the Mac Mini, it's going to take me 10 hours to edit that video. Well, it's $500 divided by the 10 hours. But on my M3 Pro MacBook Pro that I luckily still have, it's got a lot more GPU power. And I don't have to make these sacrifices on the red footage, meaning that I can get edits sometimes done in three hours. So then that's $500 divided by three hours. Then it comes down to time is money. Now, 
I don't see myself getting rid of the M4 Mac Mini because it is an insane value. On top of that, the cost to sell my M3 Pro MacBook Pro and my Mac Mini and get maybe like an M4 Pro Mac Mini uh, and keep my MacBook Air as my travel laptop, the whole cost of that just doesn't make sense. Macs lose their value a lot after the first year. So I'm fortunate enough to have my M3 Pro MacBook Pro when I need to edit, you know, client work or some longer end YouTube videos for certain clients that are longer than 20 minutes and it's all in 6K raw. I just need that GPU power in order to move things along, have smoother timelines, faster rendering, faster exporting. It all makes a difference in the end. But yes, it is still possible on the M4 Mac Mini. I don't want to say it isn't. It just does take a little bit longer. And sometimes time is money. I wouldn't have known how powerful the M4 Mac Mini is without testing it. And because of the cost, they're not that expensive to pick up, test. It's not like Apple sends them to me for free. So those are the machines I like to test. The higher end ones, they're way more than anything I need. So I'm not interested to see what they can do because quite frankly, I know they could do a lot, but it's these small, cheap, affordable machines that have intrigued me of how much they can do for the money. So the question is, should you get one now here in 2025? And the answer is if you fall into the category of 90 to 95% of people that want this, the base model M4 Mac Mini is still the best value machine, period. Especially the fact that you can change the internal memory storage and take a, the 256 gig drive that comes installed on the base model and swap it out for one you can get on Amazon for up to two terabytes for like less than $300. It's kind of an insane value proposition, especially when you think of the fact that you don't have to upgrade your memory right away. You could wait a few months, save up to do so. And then also all these are available on Amazon. So I know a lot of people have heard many different things over the past year of how reliable they are. My whole thing is if you buy it on Amazon and it doesn't work, you just return it and either get a refund or you get a new one. And not a lot of the other vendors, you can do that. You just have the guarantee on Amazon. So I think for 90 to 95% of people, if you're doing, you know, schoolwork, productivity, light video editing, or anything that's 4K or less, the M4 Mac Mini is an insane value proposition for the money here in 2025. Now, if you are a professional and you are editing in 6K RAW footage like I am or higher resolution than that, then no, you're probably going to want to get something at the very least an M4 Pro Mac Mini or an M4 Mac Studio, um, especially because it's not that a lot of you would need the Max, uh, Mac Studio. It's that the Max Mac Studio at this time, even the base model, will offer more than what you need. So you'll have a really powerful machine for the next like five years or more. There's even been some deals earlier this year that Micro Center did a $999 base model M4 Pro Mac Mini deal. And I almost jumped on it. And the day I went to go drive down to the store, it was over. Yes, I do still believe the M4 Mac Mini is the best value Mac period in 2025, even if you get it close to that $599 retail price. Now, I know there's rumors about the M5 Mac Mini coming out next year, and I think there's a few things to think about. I don't think there's going to be many updates to the M5 Mac Mini other than the M5 chip itself. I think we're going to get the same RAM, the same internal storage, and I don't think we're going to see a step up to Thunderbolt 5 and the ports in the back as it's not um, a standard yet, quite frankly. Uh, Thunderbolt 4 is really the main standard right now. And even right now, I have a few Thunderbolt 5 devices and I don't use them to their fullest. So I think it's going to be a few years before we see Thunderbolt 5 be a standard on all machines. But if you need a computer right now, the Mac Mini is the best value you can get. The M4, you really can't beat it. And if you need something right now, I wouldn't wait, you know, six months to get the M5. I would get what you need now. And the M4 Mac Mini is at such an aggressive price point, it will pay for itself. If you have any questions, anything I didn't go over in today's video, let me know in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me as always, and I will catch you in the next video.